The universe is not static. Uh, an element will not necessarily remain that same ele element throughout the lifetime of the universe. It can decay. Other processes can happen as well. So let me talk about maybe three simplified decay processes just to give you an idea of how this works. If I've got a nucleus, and the nucleus has got protons and neutrons in it. By the way, the at the low levels of elements, I pretty much have as many protons as neutrons. Carbon, the most common, for example, the most common isotope of carbon is carbon-12. Carbon has six protons and, and six neutrons, so they're pretty much equal. And the neutrons actually help to balance out the protons, because the protons, they don't like each other, right? If they get close enough, there's something called a strong force, whereas they'll repel, 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 as soon as they get close enough, within the radius of a nucleus, they'll attract to one another. But that attractive force decreases rapidly as you move away from each other. So to kind of kill that, uh, that repulsive force, you put the neutrons in. They're like packing peanuts. And, and they fit in there to make the nucleus as stable as possible. As you get more and more protons, you start having to have many more neutrons. Um, uranium, the most common isotope of uranium is U-238. It's got 92 protons. That means it's got 100 and 146 neutrons. So it's got to have a lot more neutrons just to hold the darn thing together. So, and some of these aren't very stable. U-235, U-238 takes like four and a half billion years for half of it to decay. U-235 decays much faster. That's what's known as a fissionable material. Uh, so stability is an important issue. Uh, let's talk about how these things break up. First process. Alpha, which is given by this letter, alpha, Greek alpha, decay. And uh, an alpha particle, well, they didn't know what it was. It was like particle A, right? They didn't know what was being discharged at the time. They finally figured out it's a helium nucleus. It turns out that two protons and two neutrons fit together pretty well. And when a, um, when a nucleus undergoes radioactive decay, this is a common way to spit things out. If you've got a big, ad, big element, lots of protons and neutrons, it tends to come out quite often in chunks, like this. So 83 bismuth, 83 bismuth 208. And that's going to decay. It's going to spit out an alpha particle plus something else. Now, this is a nuclear reaction equation. But all it is is it's bean counting. Right here, that's the number of protons. The number of protons on the left has to be equal to the number of protons on the right. The total nucleon number on the left has to be equal to the total nucleon number on the right. So if I've got 82, 83 protons right there, they spit out two, then I must have 81. 81 and 2 is 83. And I look up 81, and it's like thallium, isn't it? TL. Yes. I think that's thallium. OK, so TL204. And I know it's got 208 and 4, 204. Now, this is also spitting out some energy. I'm not really getting into that. It may also be spitting out other things. Typically, you're spitting out things called neutrinos as well. And I'm not really delving too far into the theory. You notice I talked about protons and neutrons, but I didn't discuss their components, the quarks. I'm not going to get that far down the road. Um, neutrinos are very, very, very low mass objects, so low that we don't even know their mass. We just know the upper limit. They have no charge. They don't seem, well, they don't seem to interact with uh, with mass, or with electromagnetic particles the way we're used to. Very tricky. So we're going we're to ignore that. We're just going to talk about some of these basic pieces. I spit out an alpha particle. OK? We know how to do a nuclear reaction equation now. Alpha particles are big. They're helium, right? And you can block helium with, well, a helium balloon. Right? Helium balloon keeps a helium in. So it doesn't take much to block alpha particles, because they're helium. So uh, Clothing. 
clothing will stop alpha radiation. But you don't want to ingest it. You don't want to breathe it in. You don't want to get it on a sore in your hand. Because what's going on with this is it's a nucleus. It's not the whole atom. So this helium nucleus, this alpha particle, it's missing two electrons. Otherwise, it would be neutral. And it's going to find those two electrons. And if it comes in contact with your body, it's going to take them off of your body. So alpha radiation can literally you know, rip your molecules apart. It's going to take those electrons. But it's easy to stop because it's big. And that charge makes it attracted to material that will stop it. Um, let's see. Beta radiation. Beta decay. And beta decay is the decay of an electron. That's a, I think that's a minus one. Electrons are kind of strange. But it works in the equation, I should say, equals electron. The atomic number for an electron is minus one. And the nucleon number is zero, the number of nucleons. And here's, the, here's basically what happens. A neutron decays. And a neutron is given by this. No protons, one nucleon. And when the neutron decays, it decays into a proton, which is a hydrogen nucleus, plus an electron. I am not saying that a nucleus, that a neutron, is a proton and an electron smashed together. I'm not going that far. I'm just saying that when it decays, it becomes a proton and an electron. You can see they balance out. The atomic number here is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0. Neutron, nucleon number here is 1. 1 plus 0 is, is 1. So bromine's got 35 protons. And this is uh, bromine 80. That's the nucleus of the isotope. When you're talking about an isotope, you say like bromine 80. Because you can already figure out that it's got 35 because you know it's bromine, 35 protons. And that's going to decay to uh, krypton, which is one higher. I don't know what the rest is. Let's see. Plus an electron. Minus 1, E0. So it's going to decay to krypton 80. Now what happens here is a neutron in the nucleus of the bromine became a proton and an electron. The electrons aren't allowed in the nucleus. It got spit out. The proton remained. So I gained a proton, but I lost a neutron. So I have one higher atomic number, but still the same the same 80, because I've got one less neutron, but one more proton. This is how beta decay works. A neutron on its own has a half-life of about sheesh, 12, 12 minutes. So they don't last very much, they don't last very long on their own. Beta decay. Another one is uh, gamma radiation. Oh, by the way, a beta particle, since it's an electron, an electron is much smaller than an alpha particle helium nucleus. And so it takes more to stop it. And it's, it's uh, got one less charge that it's got to grab, right? It's got one negative instead of two positive charges. But it's still looking to neutralize itself. So it's going to grab stuff. Uh, a ream of paper is thick enough to stop beta decay or beta radiation, electrons. Action. Another one is gamma radiation. That's a uh, a G, a gamma. Oh, sorry, beta is. Here's a symbol for beta. It's just a B with a, a long tail. And again, they, they knew alpha, they knew beta, they knew gamma, they didn't know what they were. Now, let's see. What about strontium? Strontium uh, 87. Let's say it's, it's very energized. It's got, um, it's, got an excited, it's got an excited state. It turns out the nucleus has excited states just like the, the electrons do. And this asterisk you don't have to put in there. I'm just saying it's got it all excited. And what it's going to do is it's going to just purely dump a gamma ray. And a gamma ray is a photon. It's a very high energy photon. And it's a, well, 
Why would it be high energy? Uh, a nucleus is, what, 10 to the minus 15th meters across. And so you can only have something that's jiggling on that order. So it's going to have very tiny jiggles, very short period, very high frequency gamma rays. A lot of these other reactions are going to uh, put out gamma rays too. I'm just not giving you the details. But so in this case, if you're just dumping a gamma ray, you're just dumping pure photonic energy. And you're not going to, you're not going to change the material at all. It just de-excites. Now gamma rays, it's a photon. It has no charge and it has no mass. And so it can travel quite a ways through lead without ever seeing a piece of lead. So lead shielding is, is necessary for blocking gamma radiation. And even that doesn't work. You and I are getting penetrated all the time by gamma rays from, from produced by cosmic rays from outside our planet. Gamma ray is, uh, is very difficult to block.